Our mayor here in Dallas told us the other day that it's going to get worse before it gets better. Get worse before it gets better, but it will get better. I don't know if I believe him. I mean, this must have been what he was talking about, though. I mean, see, now it appears that we will be declaring a state of emergency here in Dallas. So FYI, things are way past state of emergency. I mean, in my house, at least. And of course, you know, they are. Why? Uh, what do we get out of not being overly cautious about this? Seriously, what do we get out of tempering our concern about the spreadability of a disease that makes you vomit blood until you are dead? You bleed from your eyes. You vomit. It comes out every end. An abundance of caution is absolutely called for. You want proof? Look no further than the way things have been handled so far. We were told over and over that there's nothing to worry about. You guys are just being silly. And as such, people treated it that way. They sent Ebola victims home from hospitals. They gave, they, they gave exposed nurses permission to fly while they had a fever. Oh, wait a minute. Did you not hear that part? I mean, I know we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but yeah, it turns out that not only did that nurse, Amber Vinson, not only did she work on an infected Ebola patient with the most limited of resources. I mean, she touched him. She had direct contact with him. Not only did the protocols that existed, if they did, suck to an unimaginable degree, but to top it off, the CDC told this woman who had a low grade fever she had a fever. She was contagious at the time that it was totally fine to get on a plane with over 100 other passengers. Now, think about this for a minute. She just didn't sit on a plane with 100 and some odd passengers. Think about all of the steps you go through just to get on an airplane. You go to the airport. You go up. If you don't print your boarding pass at home, you go up to the ticket counter and you, you exchange information, your license, anything like that with the ticket agent. Or you go to the kiosk and you press buttons with your Ebola hands on the kiosk, right? Then you take your documents, your boarding documents, your identification, your boarding pass, and you go wait in line at security. And then what happens after you're waiting in line at security? You hand your information to an agent, to a TSA. They touch, after you touch it with your bullet hands, they touch the license and boarding pass. They check it, they hand it back to you. Then you go to security. What happens in security? What happens? You get the bin. You put all your stuff in the bin. You touch it with your hands. You put all your stuff in the bin. You send it down the conveyor belt. You go through security. Then you get your stuff in the bin. Do you think that they, what, dump bleach on it? The, you're talking about the government here. No, they don't. They send it right back to the stack, and everybody else touches it after you touched it with your bowl of hands, if you were the nurse and you had a bowl of hands. That's what happened. You have to think about this, too. Did she go and get lunch? Did she stand in line at Starbucks, maybe get her some coffee? Did she use the restroom before aborting the plane. And then you have to remember the boarding agent. She hands the information to the boarding agent. Now you're on the plane. She's sitting on the plane. Did she use the restroom on the plane? You're sit when you're sitting in your seat on the plane, what all do you touch? If you're like me, you have gloves on and a face mask already because you're that douchebag, except you're not a douchebag anymore. You're right. And nobody can make fun of you anymore because you anticipated stuff like this. No, you sit there on the plane, you, you mess with the air vent, don't you? You touch all over the seatbelt, you touch the armrest. Maybe you're one of those people that has armrest wars. So she touched like a lot of stuff. The CDC on their website states that Ebola can live on surfaces for hours, hours. Now, what, ha what if she sneezed? Do you think she sneezed or coughed on anyone? Think about how far a sneeze travels and how horrible people are at covering their mouths or even staying home when they're ill. Did, did they, those people then catch it and spread it? Who knows? We have no idea. Caution has long since been thrown to the wind in this case. Look, take a look at this video. This is exactly what I'm talking about. They're loading the Ebola patient onto a... Who's this guy? Who the hell is this guy? Do you notice anything weird about this? Hey, fella, you forgot your hazmat suit. Don't know if he knows that. Do you think he knows that he forgot his hazmat suit? Do you think that all those other guys are wearing their hazmat suits for your health? Actually, yes. The answer is yes. They are wearing those suits for their health, you idiot. Stop taking risks with everyone else's lives to prove that you're too tough for Ebola. Ebola will always win. <sighs> I feel like I'm in crazy town.
Stop it. People, stop trying to prove to everyone that there is no reason to panic. There is a reason to panic. At some point, the whole calm down crew, calm down guys like Shep Smith and my head writer Ben Howe calls them, they need to stop telling everybody to calm down and start agreeing that maybe, just maybe there might be a reason to be upset and concerned, just possibly. And even the head of the CDC, who loves to pretend that there's nothing to worry about, he knows that when it comes down to it, you know, there really, there's no point in being overly cautious. He knows this. Watch Megan Kelly, who's been so awesome on this issue. She totally busts him. Then we challenged him about whether the CDC's protocols were adequate. You would go into a, a an infected risk. Ebola patient's room without covering your head, with only wearing one pair of gloves and with your feet exposed, you would do that? Absolutely. More is not always better. Better is better. More is not always better. Well, today we got a picture of Dr. Frieden visiting an Ebola ward in Liberia. Look at him there. That's him front and center. He is covered head to toe and is double gloved. Clearly, in this case, more is better. Double gloved? Did you see any neck gap? Boom. And earlier today, Dr. Thomas Frieden got an earful from Colorado Congressman Cory Gardner. I believe you mentioned that there are approximately 100 to 150 people a day coming into the United States from the affected areas. That's my understanding, yes. And to Mr. Wagner, you had mentioned that we're screening 94% of those people. As of today, with the expansion to the four additional locations, that covers about 94%. Okay, so of the 100 to 150, 94% are being covered. That means that somewhere between two and 3,000 people a year are coming into this country without being screened from the affected areas? Yeah. Really? So keep it up, fellow panickers. The only reason that half of the news that we've gotten has even come out is because we refuse to pretend like everything is okay. We've refused to pretend that it's all kittens and sunshine, that Ebola isn't really contagious. People don't die from it. I say Godspeed and pass the medical mask. We'll be back after this. Oh, but first, get online and take part in The Blaze's ongoing Ebola conversation using hashtag TheBlazeEbolaChat. I'm watching.